So I want to take just a few minutes and talk about recursive sequences. Sometimes I call these recursions. Um, so otherwise known as a recursion. And this is going to be an idea. So, so remember, we're talking about power series. Power series are functions of the form c sub n x to the n, where c sub n is some sequence. Right. So this is the kind of function that we're going to be working with. And what I want to do is I want to just take a minute or two and talk about these values, c sub n, these sequences. And oftentimes what's going to happen when, when we start using power series methods, we're going to start solving problems that we could have solved other ways. But the real strength of power series is that we're going to be able to solve differential equations that we couldn't solve any other ways. So something like y double prime uh, equals, uh, say, x squared y looks totally simple, totally straightforward, and it's a pain. Um, and so uh, these types of equations, it turns out, are going to be really nice for power series. And we'll talk about exactly how those work. Now, when we're doing these problems where you can't have a nice closed algebraic solution, you often have to deal with recursive sequences. So that's why I want to talk about that. So let's suppose that you have a sequence. And uh, I'm going to call this sequence uh, f sub n for reasons that'll be clear soon. Um, and let's say that f sub 0 is 0, f sub 1 is 1. And then afterwards, f sub n is going to be defined as the sum of the two previous values. Uh, whenever n is at least two. Okay, so the nth value of the sequence is going to be the sum of the two previous values. So this sequence is going to be uh, zero, one, and then if you add zero and one, you get one. One and one is two, one and two is three, two and three is five, eight, 13, 21, 34, 55, and so on, 89, 144. Anyways, so uh, this is called the, the Fibonacci sequence, hence the F. Okay, so this is the Fibonacci sequence. So what we're going to be doing is when I give you a sequence, let's say I start with, um, there, there's really two things here. Let's say I start with a value a sub 2 is 3. And uh, then I tell you that the next value, a sub n, is going to be twice the previous value. And when n is at least 1. And here you could just look at the sequence and figure out uh, what's going to happen here. So you're going to have the sequence a sub n starting at 0 is going to be 3. And then every time you increase 1 in your index, you're going to double the previous value. So you go 3, 6, 12, 24, and so on. Now, it turns out that there's a nice closed formula for the sequence. And this is 3 times 2 to the n. Okay, so it turns out that this is a nice closed formula. By a closed formula, what I mean is there's a function, there's like a rule that we're giving to the sequence so that in order to figure out the hundredth term, I don't have to go through the first 99 terms. I can just plug in n equals 100 and figure out uh, what's that value going to be. Okay, so closed forms are the best possible solution. It turns out that you get closed forms basically when your answer uh, when your differential equation is nice and there's a nice algebraic closed uh, form for your differential equation, uh, meaning that there is probably another method that we could use to solve this. Um, but I just kind of want to get used to this idea of sequences. Uh, and so just again as a, another example, let's find the first, uh, I don't know, uh, handful of non-zero terms. Let's say that we have a sequence C sub n uh, where C sub n is defined uh, as say um, uh, c sub zero is one, uh, c sub one is four, and then c sub n is going to be the n minus first term, so the previous term minus the term before that. Okay, and this is how the sequence is defined for n greater than or equal to two. So in this case, the sequence c sub n, let's just find the first few values. I'm not going to worry about whether or not there's a nice closed form. I don't care. There is, but I don't care. Um, and so c sub n is going to be, let's see, so we're going to have 1 and 4. And then from this point forward, what we're going to do is we're going to take uh, 4 minus 1. So we're going to take the previous term minus the term before that. So 4 minus 1 will be 3. 3 minus 4 will be negative 1. Negative 1 minus 3 will be negative 4. 
negative four minus a negative one will be negative three. Negative three minus a negative four will be one. One minus a negative three will be four. And this happens to just repeat indefinitely. So this one, four, three, negative one, negative four, negative three value happens to get repeated because of how the sequence works. Okay, so that's what that uh, sequence is gonna look like. Uh, maybe there's another one. Let's say that we have uh, a sub n uh, is defined to be, so, so let's define a sub one to be two. And then a sub n is gonna be, uh, let's say uh, a sub n minus one squared plus one. So here the sequence a sub n, let's just find the first few values again, we're gonna have two. And then to get the next term, so when n is at least one, our values are gonna be defined, I'm sorry, when, uh, let's call that a sub zero. So when n is at least one, this is gonna be defined as, uh, let's see, the previous value squared plus one. So two squared plus one is five, five squared plus one is 26. Uh, 26 squared, I did this to myself, 26 squared, um, I don't know what that is, but you're going to get 26 squared plus one, whatever that number is. I've already started this, so we might as well just do this. This is going to be uh, 676, so plus one will be 678, and so on. Okay, so a very rapidly increasing sequence. Um, and so, of course, this is, you're squaring each term. So that makes sense that every time it's going to be squared. Uh, but anyways, so these are all just examples of recursive sequences. There's nothing hard or uh, difficult about these in any way. Um, sometimes there is a little bit of pattern uh, spotting that we have to do. So we, sometimes we have to try and find this pattern. Uh, but otherwise, uh, we're just going to, you know, find the first few terms of a sequence and then we'll write our answer accordingly. So we'll see exactly how these work out. But that's that's recursive sequences.